Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today we are going to uh, look at one of the important uh, companies called Li and Fang and they are Hong Kong based company and I will talk about how they are a very uh, uh, nice and good orchestrator and they are in the apparel business and we have seen in the last few uh, lectures about governance of global supply chains and also uh, the orchestration as a model of governance. This is as I can ask to warning everything in orchestration we basically the owner does not own anything but he just orchestrates. In other words he just manages others resources but this may look very trivial and easy but it is not uh, it is not so. So we are going to look at uh, Li and Fang case and see how uh, uh, we can learn about uh, orchestration from Li and Feng's example. Well, the source for this uh, is the Harvard cases. There are lots of Harvard cases uh, on Li and Fang right from 1999 onwards. And there is a book by Jerry Wynn et al. Uh, on uh, dealing with uh, with this. So, uh, so to start we will talk about Li and Fang, what have become this one. I mean Li and Fang if it is an orchestrator, what are the competencies of Li and Fang? So as an orchestrator and the second thing is we are going to use the ecosystem approach here. The ecosystem has the service chain process at Li and Fang and so we are first going to map and learn about the service chain process. Then we look at the price target. Uh, how Li and Fang as an orchestrator is going to bring down the prices and does better than competitors. There are lots of competitors to Li and Fang and uh, how Li and Fang wins in the price market. And if we look at the ecosystem model and there the we have already looked at the supply chain service chain process. So we will look at the other three resources, service delivery mechanisms and institutions. Well, we use this ecosystem model to study performance, risk, innovation and governance. So we are going to do that. We are going to do two things which are important are the performance and governance here. We are going to look at how Li and Fang governs the entire supply chain or the service chain and we will conclude and the conclusion is basically uh, a simple thing we are going to say Li Fang is the best orchestrator that is in the world today and is it possible to imitate Li Fang and become the best orchestrator? That is a good question. A lot of people try to do it and it is something uh, to be learning, uh, learn from this case. So let's look at Lian Fang. Well, who is Lian Fang? It's a B2B trading service provider. It deals with between the big players, big retailers in the US, EU, and so on, and the tail end of the supply chain, the suppliers in the Asia Pac region. And who are its customers? The customers are large retailers and manufacturers of labor intensive, low cost consumer goods. In other words, he is dealing with apparel, he is dealing with toys and uh, other uh, leather goods and so on. These are low cost, highly labor intensive goods. Majority of them hail from US and Europe, the, the, the large retailers. Small retailers and manufacturers who lack volume. So while the large retailers have large volumes and so on, they are looking for 
cost cutting. Small retailers and manufacturers they go to Li and Fang because they don't have the volumes, volumes, and if they want to do it themselves, then it becomes very expensive for them. So, who are the competitors of uh, Li and Fang? Customer staff could perform the same functions. Supposing you are getting uh, uh, a particular big order for Li and Fang from Walmart. Well, Walmart has staff that could perform the same functions as Li and Fang did. They, know they could do a search out for good suppliers. They could inspect, analyze, and select the factories for each order, and then making the inspection visits to track the supplier progress of the order. Well, there's nothing wrong. I mean, they they, they must be doing uh, this already, so they could continue doing it instead of outsourcing it to Li and Fang. Then B2B companies would need to prove that they can do better than customer employees. Thus, the competition comes from large companies with international supplier networks like Li and Fang. Then small outfits that have good knowledge of suppliers in small region as per your product area, large customers who have capital to invest and operate on their own. So these are some of the competitors that, that we have. But we are going to show in our analysis that the competitors of the networks like Li and Fung, others, Li and Fung does it better than them. We'll show you an example uh, how they do better. What are the threats for uh, Li and Fung? The threats are disintermediation. In other words, it's a B2B. It acts as an intermediary between two companies. The retailers on one end and the suppliers in the Asia Pacific region. So, is, it, is there a threat of disintermediation by new technologies? For example, people thought when the internet B2B exchanges have come into play, then people thought you can easily search for the suppliers and you can find out from the web who are supplying what and you can deal directly with them. And the brokers or the intermediaries like Li and Fang will become decimated. But it didn't happen. The reason is the following. The reason is you can search, they use the internet to search for a good player or good supplier of wool, good supplier of who, who can sue and so on. But how do you know that they are good? How do you know about the quality of their this one? They may say anything on the internet. But it may not be, uh, it may not be the truth. And second thing is, if you are a foreigner, if you are a supplier, if you are a buyer from, from United States, why should a Chinese supplier or an Indian supplier believe you? So there is the, there is the reputation count that comes in. So for several reasons, there's new technologies and B2B B, B, B exchanges and uh, they didn't take off very much, as we see later, but it is much more than just connecting via the internet. So what is the business model that uh, Li and Fang follows? Li and Fang makes no products of its own, rather it orchestrates the production of goods by others. This is the orchestrated definition we have seen in the last class, and it draws on vast global market of highly focused providers to arrange for private label manufacturing, primarily on behalf of US and European clothiers. Now here, <coughs> we are dealing with small players who are highly focused. If somebody is doing dyeing, he does only dyeing. He is an expert on that. If somebody manufactures chippers, he is an expert in, in chippers. If somebody knows how to sew uh, trousers, he is an expert on that. So these are highly focused small players. And what Li and Fang does is to draw upon them and connect with them. And for a specific product or a client, Li and Fang assembles a customized set of specialized providers to handle everything from product development to sourcing of new materials, production planning and management, and eventually shipping it to the customer. So, I mean, you can see the complexity of uh, what Li and Fang has to do. It has to get these players who are trustworthy to handle everything from product development to finally shipping and delivering to the customer. If glitches pop up, 
I mean, some things, nothing is perfect. Things can go up at any stage of the intricate process along the network. The company can quickly shift the activity from one provider to another. So you can see the kind of execution capabilities that Lee and Fang should have so that you can move from one to another. First of all, you have to detect there is a glitch. And second thing is you have to find out what it is and it can be repaired. And thirdly, if this if need be, you have to switch to another provider. So chasing the low cost labor around Asia, that is the imperative of Lee and Fang's continuous international expansion. Now, if you look at the international expansion of arbitrage network companies, arbitrage network companies expand into new countries either to tap new lower cost labor markets or to reach new customers. What is that you are looking for? New customers at the, at the high end or low cost markets at the other end, at the tail end. Simultaneous growth on both sides may strain the administered resources. It's not possible to do both. What does Lee and Fung does? Lee and Fung's international growth is entirely in the former sort. In other words, it opens branches in developing countries and develops supplier contacts in the new countries, whether it is India, Vietnam, Bangladesh, or Cambodia or, or Indonesia, wherever it is, it opens new branch offices and develops suppliers in those countries for whatever needed. On the other hand, there are software service providers like HCL, Infosys and so on, where it is a single source country that is, you know, you are sourcing to India and expand by opening selling offices in new countries. You want to market your uh, IT uh, competencies in either Europe, USA, Europe and so on. So basically you are looking for new customers in US, Europe and so on. So this, there is a difference between uh, whether you are looking for uh, new customers or new uh, partners. So whereas in Lee and Fang case, they are looking for low partners who supply at uh, in the low, from the low cost countries. So what is Lee and Fang's manufacturing network? Lian Fang has ties with more than 8,000 factories and managing for 8,000 factories each with 500 workers would make one responsible for managing 4 million workers. So this should be, this should be 8 here. So managing 8,000 factories each with around 5,000 work, workers would make one responsible for 4 million workers. So you can see that by orchestrating across 8,000 factories and similar number of logistics players, warehouse players and several hundred, over 100 countries, you can see the kind of uh, effort that Lee and Fang should have and it is equivalent to having 4 million workers for, for this as far as your production is concerned, but you don't own any of them. So let us look at, if you want to do all these great kind of things that manage 8,000 workers and uh, uh, supply to all the people on time at low cost, then what are the competencies that are required for Li and Fung? So one thing is the financial, human and social capital. In general, a company has three kinds of capital. The first one is financial capital, which is cash on hand resource in the bank and assets and so on. And here in, in case of Li and Fang, it should be the human capital that, uh, that it has. It has the human capital employees with intelligence combined with education and experience. But of course it has cash. And third one is social capital which is the relationship with other players who get opportunity to use its financial and human capital. So. If you look, want to look at which importance wise, what is the Li and Fang concentrates on is the, the social capital. The, the human capital of course, the, the skill training and others, the soft skills, uh, the human capital with soft skills are the employees of, of Li and Fang. And of course financial capital is, uh, uh, it follows automatically from the social capital and the human capital. So. And if you look at uh, other companies, for example, in software companies, the human capital dominates. 
whereas the social capital there is is in terms of the done by the marketing companies. So, in in most of these, in the case of an orchestrator, the social capital dominates. So, what are the products Leon Fung offers to the clients? Network relationships and knowledge. I think that's very simply. It's not a, a product uh, like uh, a car or or a, or a shirt or or a, or a trouser or something, but it is the relationships, it's the knowledge of the domain knowledge that it has, and also it was uh, the network that it has. So if you map the social network of Lee and Fung. The inter-organizational network, it should be an interesting this one and it has strong ties with the governments, with all the resource providers who are the suppliers of uh, various kinds of resources for APRO industry and also the relationships with various kinds of small and medium manufacturers in the Asia Pacific region in India, China, uh, Indonesia uh, and so on and also knowledge about the whole thing. In other words, knowledge about the countries, their labor, their uh, uh, their la their uh, laws about uh, the trade trade laws, and also the culture and other kinds of things. So the company sources of competitive advantage lie in the scope and timeliness of its knowledge, and in the number and depth of relationships. As I said, this is an expansion of this. What is the source of competitive advantage? Supposing there is somebody else, some other orchestrator. So, I mean, how do we compare Lee and Fang with some other, some other orchestrator in the same business? It depends on the strength of the network and also uh, the, uh, the number and depth of its relationships and so on. So, so, Lee and Fung offers to clients network relationships and knowledge, of course, that is it. Relationships with factory owners. This is an expansion of the previous slide. Relationships with factory owners and managers. Suppliers often give priority to orders from Lee and Fung customers because they knew that they would pay on time and not reject finished goods for spurious reasons. So, one of the big risks that suppliers, small scale suppliers face is in case of trouble, if the factory owner, the big player is in trouble, then he would try to pass it on his troubles to the suppliers by saying that the goods are not of quality and so on, they are not giving, not giving a very good reasons, but some subjective reasons and so on. So, that Lee and Fang never does it. The connection, connections with the government in Hong Kong and Beijing, ability to, to reduce impact of quota restrictions. Now, there is what is called quota restrictions that are followed worldwide. In other words, in the apparel industry, there is a, there is a, a what is called multi-fiber agreement according to which each country is allocated a certain amount of quota. So, that is why a lot of these players have started their factories in various uh, low cost countries like Cambodia and Vietnam and other places. So, what happens is each country is given a quota. Supposing it so happens that a particular country is not able to supply that quota, then or a particular company in China is not able to supply what is allotted to it, then in such a case, then the, the government, because of the government connections, Li and Fang is informed of that and he will be able to use that, that extra quota of other companies as its quota. So, Li and Fang has in-depth knowledge of the manufacturing capabilities, special skills and business practices of each company. It knows who is the finances that particular company or who are the employees, what are their capabilities, what it does and so on and each supplier that can help the customers choose among the manufacturing options for the network provided. So, once it knows the depth knowledge, in other words, each supplier has an ecosystem. Not only it is service chain, where it gets its resources from and if it is in a country and the, the institutions and the government regulations and all that for that country and also the delivery mechanisms that they use. So, Lee and Frank has in-depth knowledge of these capabilities 
for each company that it was. So the fund managers keep the man, uh, managers keep themselves informed of changing labor costs in different countries and allocate production to least expensive countries. Different trade restrictions each country imposes, such as tariffs or quotas, are imposed from each of the trading partners and free trade agreements. So there are several things that uh, in the global trade that happen between countries. So if there is a new free trade agreement between the two countries, then Li and Fang tries to utilize that. So you have you have Li and Fang offers to the clients network relationships and knowledge. You can see what it does in terms of uh, this and how important it is the social capital of a particular company in terms of um, yes. So while studying this particular example of Li and Fang, I am trying to emphasize on when you are an orchestrator, what are the capabilities that you should develop so that you succeed. It is Li and Fang could be in April business, but supposing you are in some other business then you could be in education, you could be in other uh, health care or uh, low cost housing and so on. So in all those things, what are the kinds of capabilities that you have? You cannot just start a business and try and think that the capabilities come by themselves. Now one important thing is the mutual dependence and trust. As I mentioned before, Lee and Fang goes goes to companies to get business, get give business, but the companies should listen to Lee again to and do things for, for Lee and Fang. So what does it do? How why does this mutuality happens? Lee and Fang targets to consume thirty to seventy percent of its production capabilities of the capacity of its eight thousand suppliers. In other words, it tells the suppliers, look, the minimum uh, uh, amount of work I am going to give you is 30 percent. The maximum is 70 percent. The rest of it you have to get from others. In other words, it has to do, uh, these suppliers has to do at least 30 percent of its business to outside suppliers. What is the advantage of this kind of uh, constraint? I will tell you in a while. This gives priority attention from the factories for its end customer orders while at the same time avoiding complete dependence of the factories on Li and Fong orders. There are two things. When, when they have to go for 30 percent, so they are keeping contact with the outside world. So when they are keeping contacts with the outside world, two things happen. One thing is they are not completely dependent on Li and Li and Fung. So Li and Fung wants to the safety of their of its partners even if it fails. So that is one thing so that it keeps contact with other players and second thing is the suppliers if the other players demand some other efficiencies in the process or uh, they want to use new technologies the suppliers will learn from that and that will benefit Li and Fung. So this is basically a mutual trust and mutual learning the first one. It wants to also learn from the suppliers and suppliers will learn from the competitors of Li and Fung. Li and Fung cultivates trust by paying several visits to the supplier during the production process. First visit is scheduled prior to production of raw material, inspection and acquisition. Next visit occurs after the first batch of garments is produced to stem quality problems prior to production and third visit before packing for supervision and final quality assurance. So the, the Li and Fang always keeps in touch with, with the, with the, uh, with the suppliers and does at least three visits. And nowadays of course there is uh, uh, some of these visits are being replaced by video conferencing and uh, also by data mining using whatever uh, results they, they have, their quality and uh, other data you can mine and find out uh, what is what is happening. But of course nothing can replace uh, hand checking. So the Li and Fang employees usually visit their uh, suppliers. So if the garments do not pass inspection, the supplier is allowed to replace the defectives. 
So it is, he is given, it is not fired, but he is given another chance. So you can, you can look at uh, uh, how Li Anfang gets the, uh, the trust of the people. First of all, assuring 30% of the, uh, uh, of the, of their capacity as orders and saying that 30 percent you have to get outside. This is called the 30-30 rule which is followed, uh, which is imitated by others as well. And also by frequent visits having conferences of uh, uh, the partners, partnership conferences and also engaging in terms of financial assistance and so on. Lee and Fong offers to the clients knowledge of the ecosystem. What does it mean? Knowledge of the manufacturing capabilities, special skills, business practice of each country and each supplier. So it has the knowledge of this or uh, the capabilities of the 8,000 uh, suppliers. And uh, also not only the suppliers, what sub skills they have and which country they are and what are the rules and regulations of this country. And knowledge allows Lee and Fang to help customers choose among the manufacturing options it network, network provided. And for example, they knew which countries made leather jackets more skillfully and which and which at lowest cost, how easily each factory could obtain raw materials and what official signatures in each country were required to import raw materials. I mean, this is great knowledge because each country requires the, the, you know, there are a lot of, uh, if you want to import some raw materials, then each country have their own rules. And this is like having an Excel sheet of all the, all the countries for all the materials that uh, uh, it deals with, for all the products, for all the suppliers. So it's a huge database that it has and uh, it has uh, data mining and other, there are lots of, lots of skills of using machine learning techniques here over the years to selection of these suppliers. So you can see that uh, that Lee and Fang follows the ecosystem approach here. In other words, it not only concentrates on the, on the suppliers, it concentrates on the delivery mechanisms, it concentrates on the institutions, it also concentrates on the, on the resources that are available like finance resources, human resources and so on. So what Li and Fang actually doing here is to collect data about each country on, uh, about the uh, about, about their, their governments and uh, for each of these products they deal with. So what is the core competency of Lee and Fong? I mean this is one of the terms if you are a management consultant, the first thing you ask for every company is what is your core competency? So having described what Lee and Fong does and what are its qualities and all that, what is Lee and Fong's core, core, core competency? So it focuses on designing the best possible path across the global network for delivering the right product to the right place at the right time and at the right price. That's what it does. But what is its strength? It's not as much in the capabilities it possesses as much as competencies it can connect to. So if you want to get the, what is the core competency of this? Capability to connect to competencies. That is the core competency of, of Li and Fang. So it may not, it has the, cap, the capabilities it knows to people, it can connect to competencies and the core competency of the network, uh, network, network orchestration is as important as firm specific capabilities. So in an ordinary form, you have the capabilities like you could manufacture this, you can design this product you can deliver this product very safely if you are a logistics company, but these kind of things. But if you are an orchestrator, then you need not have to deliver anything. You can connect to people who deliver. So this is like uh, employing somebody to find out the truth of a matter like employing a good detective. Do you know a good detective to find out what it is and so on. So basically this is the uh, uh, this is the uh, core competency of an orchestrator, capability to connect to competencies. 
So, what is the ecosystem of Lee and Farm? I mean, you have the service chain, and they have the service chain, resources, institutions, and delivery mechanisms. So, let us try to map the ecosystem of uh, of Lee and Farm. So, to map the ecosystem, first of all, we should know the service chain. We have described so far all the activities of Lee and that Lee and Farm does. You know, it connects to people, it has uh, big customers in the US and Europe who are the retailers and it has connections with, uh, with a lot of suppliers in the Asia Pacific and, and so on. But what is its ecosystem? Let us look at the service chain of uh, uh, Lee and Fong. What is the service chain of this? You know, what it does is it takes the customer needs and finally delivers it to the customer. That is the service chain that Lee and Fung has. But remember, it is not as though you know you take you take the measurements from a customer and uh, make a shirt and give it to the customer. It's not because remember that Lee and Fung does not own any factories. It only just orchestrates. It only connects to people to do what. So once the customer comes in. Let it be Rick Bach, let it be uh, Polo or whoever is the big players. Let it be Walmart. Depending on the consumer needs, Walmart may need a sweater, a sweater for ten dollars, whereas Macy's may need a sweater for hundred dollars. Depending on the, on the customer needs, you have to first do the product design. Design the product. This is usually done in Hong Kong, which is the headquarters of uh, of Lee and Fung in association with the client teams. The client has to approve the product design. Once you have the product design, then you have to develop the product. Product development and design are two different things. I mean, if you, if you, have, a, if you have a shirt, it can be made in several ways. So, the product development also need to be the final product which is developed, which is the material is used and what kind of zippers are used, what kind of buttons are used and how, what are the colors, dyings and everything. You know, the, from the design to product development, this is the full product in, in the design process. So, once these two are, are done in association or in cooperation with the, the deems of the client. Now, once you have decided this, then we have to get the various kinds of raw materials. In other words, you have to decide what are the kinds of raw materials you have to source. Now, for the order, Lee and Farm does not leave the sourcing of the raw materials to the suppliers. It basically sources from its sources and supplies it to the customers. To, to its suppliers. So, raw material sourcing is that it could be chippers, it could be wool, it could be cotton, it could be anything, it could be fabric. Depending on whatever it is, the raw material is sourced from this. You know, sourcing means it says you supply this amount to this one and everything is sort of uh, mentioned in the, in the order. Then afterwards, it is a factory sourcing. Now, the suppliers Basically, uh, it, you can call it supplier sourcing, but uh, it is factory sourcing because a supplier may have different kinds of factories in different locations. So, if somebody has a factory in Hong Kong, somebody has a factory in uh, Shanghai, and somebody else has a factory in somewhere else, uh, then you may choose the factory depending on the consumer needs and the cost you are going to pay from each of these countries. So, you have to basically do the factory sourcing and this is where they use all the knowledge, domain knowledge that they have about the factories, the countries and what is the kind of quality and what is the kind of employees does it, does it have and so on. So, the sourcing or procurement is two kinds. One is you procure raw materials and then you procure the factories. And then you go into the, once you give the order to these people, you go into manufacturing control. This is basically monitoring. And then once the manufacturing is done, it goes to shipping and shipping control. It does not do the shipping. You should 
you should look, uh, look at the terms very carefully. When it says manufacturing control, it goes to manufacturing, but it doesn't do the manufacturing, but it actually controls or uh, you know, monitors the quality of the manufacturing and then shipping. And of course, afterwards, it is goes to forwarder and consolidation. In other words, there may be several goods that are going to United States or they are going to some other place, so Europe. So it consolidates all the goods that are there and goes for customs clearance. And once the customs is cleared, it goes to, uh, after shipping, then it goes to local forwarding and wholesaler and finally to the consumer. The consumer in this particular case is the retail, retailer and retailer may uh, it may go to the retailer's warehouse or it can go to the retail market. So you can see the end-to-end -end process that Lian Fang manages and the kind of logistics that is involved from one place to the other and the kind of uh, skills that are needed for its employees when it goes through all this. And also at each stage then they have to choose all these people properly. And believe me, another thing is, this is one order that Li and Fang has. For every order, this has to be done. Maybe if Li and Fang at any point in time has thousand such orders, and this has to be done by Li and Fang for, for thousand times for this. So the service chain mapping for Li and Fang I mean, for any other company of the orchestrator is a very important thing that has to be done very carefully. So once you have the service chain, then of course you can you can see the other things easily. So what is the typical order flow of uh, uh, of Lee and Fong? How does the orders flow of a typical this one? Let's take an example. Upon the receipt of the order within a division, Lee and Fong dissects the manufacturing process and optimally allocates the work at each step to its global suppliers. So this is what is happening uh, here at this point. Once it the sources, this manufacturing control is where can we, after the factories are sourced and the raw material is this one, the raw material is delivered to the factories and the factories were asked to do whatever it needs. So Lian Fang dissects the manufacturing process and optimally allocates the work at each step to its global supply chain partners. The manufacturing process is divided into two sub-processes. The first one is the front end sales and design and the back end logistics and banking and the labor intensive middle portion. So the, there, there are only two, one is the front end and the back end are done in Hong Kong and labor intensive middle portion is spread over all over the world. So the front end and back end are performed in Hong Kong, the middle portion is further decomposed into various tasks and Li and Fang finds the best, fa finds the best factory to perform each task and the entire process is integrated using ID and logistics. So that's what a typical order of Li and Fang it takes. So let's look at an example here. So if you look at uh, the order for a garment from a European retailer, each retailer uh, will see, look at the governance of uh, Li and Fang. Each retailer goes to one division of Li and Fang and these fellows are located in Hong Kong. And Li and Fang's division, once the order is settled, it does procurement, production and control and logistics. That's are the three things in the service chain that we have seen. And yarn is procured from Korea and weaving and dyeing in Taiwan, chippers from Japan and China, and useful material and access other parts of material and manufacturing is done in Thailand. Now in Thailand, one factory, one plant may not have all the capacity that is needed. It may go to plant one, two, and three factories. And finally, from Taiwan, it goes to the retailer. So you can see that the, the order processing, after order processing step, how many countries each one visits. These are all semi-finished products which visit each of these countries and the final product goes to 
the European retailer. So this is the order flow of, of uh, Li and Fang. So uh, an order from European retailer to produce 10,000 gardeners, that is the journey. For each customer, Li and Fang may decide to buy yarn from Korean producer that have it woven and dyed in Taiwan. So they pick the yarn in Korea and ship it to Taiwan. The Japanese have the best zippers and buttons, so they have to manufacture mostly of them in China. And LF goes to YKK, a Japan, Japanese zipper manufacturer, and orders zippers from its Chinese plants. Because of the quotas and labor conditions, they determine that the best place to make the garments is Thailand. Everything gets shipped there. And if the customer needs quick delivery, they may divide the order across five factories or three factories in Thailand. So LF customizes the value chain for each order. This is the important thing that for each order, there is a different value chain. So if the order comes next day, then this same order, same material, it may take a different route. It may go to instead of, instead of Korea, it may go to some other place and instead of uh, getting it done uh, in Thailand, it can uh, get it done somewhere else in, in Vietnam. So the point is the best value chain for each product is made by uh, uh, this. So <coughs> five weeks after the order, five weeks, please notice that time. 10,000 garments arrived in the shelves of Europe, all looking alike. They came from the same factory with colors, for example, perfectly matched. If it is right color, it is right color through and through. All the 10,000 of them, same color, they come as though they are came from the same factory. The logistics and coordination are exceptional. A new type of value is added to produce a truly global product. Now here, the product becomes a commodity. It's a short can, but produce anybody, any, anytime, anywhere. Once it is designed and so on, what does Lee and Fang, and it's, although the product is visiting several countries as described, still it is not very expensive. How does it make, although it is visiting several countries in spite of the logistics and other shipping costs, how is it able to still deliver at the lower price? The label may say made in Thailand, but it is not a Thai product. Well, it may be sold in Thailand or it may be ironed in Thailand, but it is not a Thai product. It may be visited several other countries. So it is not about which company can do the best job. It is about pulling apart the value chain and optimizing each step and doing it globally. So you can see the competencies that are required for dissecting the value chain and giving each task to uh, to some partners uh, globally and then putting it all together and assembling a very nice competitive product. And that is the competencies that uh, Lee and Fung has and that are the competencies that an orchestrator should have. And this is the kind of lessons that you should learn from, from this Lee and Fung example. So, how does the, why was talking about the price, in spite of all this, how does the price, uh, Li and Fang manage the price? Well, it has the, what is called the concept of soft three. Now, you have several steps that here, product design, sourcing, logistics, wholesale, retail, information management, and so on. These are all the cost centers. In other words, each one of them will cost money, and they have their own uh, 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 cost. Now, supposing it costs one dollar to manufacture the cost. In other words, if you put the unit cost of a product, putting all together all the uh, component costs, and supposing you want to sell this at four dollars at the retail price, or to the retailer at four dollars. So, in between is the three dollars that you have where you have to do the product design, you have to do the sourcing, you have to do the logistics, you have to do the wholesale retail and so on, I mean supply to them and information management and also the managing the entire show. So 
These three dollars are the one the cost that is spread throughout the distribution channels is the soft three. It is the entire thing is the soft three. So, you have to basically manage your all your activities efficiently so that it comes below soft three because whatever comes below threat if you can do all this in two dollars you save one dollar and that becomes the profit for the company because otherwise you are, you are sell, selling at four dollars and your 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 cost is one dollar and all this if it takes more than four three dollars then you are making a loss if it makes less than two, uh, three dollars then you are making a profit so that is how uh, they try to manage the cost. How do you reduce the this one? Now, for example, how, how do you reduce this kind of uh, uh, this one? So, this requires looking at the whole processes. For example, Limited is a company. It sources shirts from Lee and Fong. Order fulfillment time 30 days. Whether it is order size of uh, 100,000, order size of uh, 1 million, order size of 10,000, it is it has to be supplied within 30 days. Now, the shipment arrived at the distribution center in Columbus, Ohio, where the shirts were sorted by size, price tag and repacked as right, right assortments for each retail store. The travel by sea to, uh, took 30 days, that is from Hong Kong to uh, or wherever it is manufactured to Columbus, Ohio and relabeling and repacking took 15 days. So, but it, in other words, the, the manufacturing time is nothing compared to the 45 days that it took. So, what uh, Limited and LF did to reduce, to maintain, to get at the soft three, this one, is arrangement where garments were price tagged and sorted in factories in Asia and were air shipped back, air shipped to a cross dock. So, in other words, these 30 days have gone to one day and this relabeling and replacing it is gone to maybe one or two days because they are done in, in Asia where you can have, you can, you can do this. So, that is how it does the cost uh, this one. So, at every process, at every process you look at the entire value chain and try to optimize it by uh, of course, it requires uh, the collaboration of various kinds of people, but uh, and also some talent of re-engineering the entire network. So, this is how uh, Li and Fang does uh, the calling. So, uh, then, so if you look at uh, what the uh, uh, the the entire uh, the case so far is, we have looked at uh, Li and Fang its competencies and it is basically a Hong Kong based company and with offices in almost every country and the offices in the country are not for manufacturing, but what do they do? They basically uh, uh, collect information regarding the country's uh, uh, law, labor laws and collect information what are the kinds of suppliers, what quality of products they do what is their cost advantage if you this one, what is the availability of power, water and so on to the suppliers, what are the financial capabilities or financial status of each of the suppliers and what are the government rules and regulations and all that. So, what it has is the entire ecosystem of the investment climate of each of these countries in, in, in Asia Pacific where this apparel business is done and also apart from the investment climate, it has also the competencies of each of the suppliers and so on. So, once it has uh, this kind of uh, knowledge and it has the connections, second thing is the connections. What is the connections? Connections with the government because apparel is follows what is called a quota system. There is a multi-fiber agreement and uh, all kinds of rules and regulations and each culture is different. For example, the Middle East, the kind of clothes that are worn are different from uh, in India or Hong Kong and so on. So, basically in the countries, uh, depending on the country, whether it has to be wool, it has to be 
uh, cotton or whatever. So, taking all these factors into account, what uh, Leon Farm does and taking the culture of factors is to make the product within the price that is base label and still make a product. And now, remember it has to be competitive with other players and the competitors that Lee and Fang has are the big players comp uh, man uh, purchasing companies because they have all the skills that Lee and Fang has but they lack only the connections that Lee and Fang has. So, given this kind of scenario, uh, the orchestration model of Lee and Fang is outstanding and what we are going to uh, do in the next uh, uh, class is to look at the other parameters of the ecosystem which are the resources and map the ecosystem first and also look at the performance and also in particular what is the governance mechanism that Lee and Fung follows. I mean it is doing an outstanding job and we said it is an orchestrator as the governance model but in particular what is the what is the governance mechanism that it follows. We will do that in the next class.